Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good evening, Nicholas. It's Colleen. Oh, Colleen, you want to be with me? Great. Yes. Is there another I... meeting today besides mine? I'm sorry? Is there another meeting today? No, it's just you today. Just me. Question for you. Yes. Now, the template for the minutes, as yeah. we completely resolve that, how are we going to work it out? Yeah, the template for the minutes has been, uh, well, I, I, I believe it was resolved. I can re- talk to Dante tomorrow to ask him and send you the template. Right. Because I, be- I believe he created it, but I, yeah. I'm not entirely sure. Last, the, last year, I'd send him a sample of a template, so he probably could. But yeah. the question is, how are we going to work it out? Is it something that we can make available for the person during the meeting to just fill in automatically? Right, yeah. So uh, I believe tomorrow is going to be the executive committee meeting. Uh, right. Dante, Dante may release it at that point in time, but oh, I'll, I'll okay, ask him tomorrow right. morning. Because, yeah, because the- I had a problem with the person who took the last minute. I got him this morning. I see. Okay, all right. So <laughs> because right, I don't know. Because I was talking about time. I know we need to have it within 48 hours. Right, right. So um, we established the rules. So I already okay. in preparation speak to a couple of people. I think one of the things we're going to do, we're going to just get a permanent secretary and a backup. Right. And okay. Once, once we get the template, we want to train people how to use it while they're in the meeting. So as soon as it is done, you all guys will more likely have it. Right. I want to go and add some more stuff to it, uh, but at least we'll have it 24 hours. That, for example, I would have needed for the meeting tomorrow. Right. I see what you're saying. Okay. So I'll I'll talk to Dante about it because I'm pretty yeah. sure he so made it. Have to be implemented. It will make life easy for you guys. You don't have to wait until somebody mail you. It should be there automatically. Right, right. So if you okay. Put your way. Okay. All right. Uh, did you get in touch with uh, Lucy Elgrave? Ethan, I sent I copied you in the email. He okay. should be attending tonight. Okay, great. All right. So we'll just. Uh, Allow him to, to present. So let's see who shows up. Oh, well, we already have Miss Pickerton. She didn't make the first meeting. We have Miss, we have Julia here. Okay. I think they're going to be connecting soon. All right, unmute. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you, Julia? I'm excellent. And you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm doing good. Mm. Is that Khalil? Yeah, it's Khalil. Very nice haircut. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> like I'm just saying, you know, haircuts are hard things to get these days. I got to do something (laughs) myself. My hair doesn't grow long enough. (laughs) Last time I tried to get my hair good, I was in in the 70s when I was still in high school and college. Afros, where people were trying to earn an afro. Could never get it to to get an afro. (laughs) I remember. (laughs) And I remember my sister had to... To, uh, to do it for me. So when you don't do it, it, it pops up. Yeah. I had my so sister do my hair this time. So I <laughs> is, that, is that who did your hair? Yeah, my sister did my hair. Yeah, I remember. Ella, you get getting compliments. <laughs> well, I just got it done yesterday. So mm. you're, the, you're, you're one of the first to compliment. <laughs> good, good evening, Miss Pickenton. How are you? Hi, Amy. Hello, how are you? Hello, guys? From Ms. Byler, how are you? Let me know what I do. Background. I'll turn it off. Good afternoon. Hello. Hey, Hi, Can you change it to a name? This is David Romeo. I can change his name. 
You could do that for him, Carrie, right? Choose your name yes. next to the number. No, okay. Hello. Hello, how are you? Mr. Romeo. I'm all right. This, this is David Romeo. Yes. Attending the meeting. Oh, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. Same here. Okay. Is that Miss Brenda? Uh, yes, Miss Pagan is here. We missed her last time. Welcome, Miss Pagan. How are you? I'm last good. time we saw each other was uh, a few months ago. Yes. I know yes. you tell us we were not, you were not able, you were busy, you were not able to make it last, minute, last month, rather. No, I was out of town last month. So. Oh, okay. I, ho I hope you were having fun and enjoying the fall foliage somewhere. Indeed, indeed. Oh, okay, great. How is everybody? Good evening. Everyone. Good evening. I see that hand waving there. <laughs> you know what, Brenda? I haven't seen you since then either. I can't help it if y'all just on lockdown at home all the time. I got places to go. Things I to got you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't say I was no place. I'm saying I didn't see you. <laughs> oh it, used be, it used to be called running the streets. I, I can do that. Yeah, sure <laughs> That's good. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we're almost there. We're almost there. We'll be running the street again. Um, good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, another. We have another phone number. We just came in. I didn't know we were supposed to. 17, 17 k 221 pa When I see those things, bring me bring back memories. 17 k 221 pa Spent 35 years dealing with those kind of numbers. Really? 35 years dealing with these kind of numbers, 17. I don't even know what those kind of numbers mean. Oh, okay. Is it a pager? No. Well, no, man, no. No, no, no. <laughs> That's a number that identify a school within New York City Department of Education. Oh. That's what they call them, no, the BIN number. So, I spent a lot of time writing those numbers, then identify was what. This to be 17K440. Good evening, all. Good evening. Hi, who's that? This is, this is Naomi Baptiste. I, pardon me, I have my, um, my kids' school information. Yeah, that's a school. That's I didn't know how to take it off. <laughs> Yeah, that's the two cent elementary school. <laughs> I used to be 17 K44. Does anybody know what that is? For a long time. Waspak Heights High School. Oh. And that's where I spent most of my school life. Over 20 years. Um do you, I don't mind, I don't see Mina here. Um, Nicholas, I'm here. What happened? I don't see Mina here. Do you have her notes? Who, who, I'm Nina? here. Is she here? Mina. Mina, Mina. Mina. Uh, uh, oh, okay, Mina, you You can hear her. Yeah, she did send me the, the minutes. I got them this morning. I sent them to you too, Julia, I hope. <laughs> I believe you I know, did. dear, but you send them to me. I was in the middle of class. I'm sorry. Do you want me to send them again? No, it's just okay. If you were here, then you can read your own notes. No, I have them here. I'll oh. share my screen and show them. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had a lot of traffic. I'm not home yet. I'm, in, I'm still in the car. Okay. Okay. But I do have them. 
Okay, Mina, thank you. Thank you for showing up even if you're on your way. I appreciate that. No problem. Okay. Let's see something. And welcome, Mr. Baptist. On our official number. Mr. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Good. Thank you. Good evening, sir. How are you? Everything well with you as a family? <laughs> I'm well, I'm well. Thank you very much. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Good evening. Hey, Brian. Nicholas, is it possible we could get going? I'm about to. I was waiting for one more person because I needed to get a report from him. So let me see if I can reach him. I thought he'd be here already because five minutes after. Just give me two minutes and we'll see. Uh, so I'm sorry, D1717K221PA, 17, 17 uh, is that Naomi Baptiste? Yes, yes, it's Naomi Baptiste. Perfect. I'm just yes. going to rename you Naomi. Oh, that, that's perfect. Or do you want me to go out and come back in under my name? No, no, no. You can do that. I got you. Okay, thank you. Yes. That's I think we do have a quorum and then we're back to start another couple of minutes. Hey, Rich, can you join us for the meeting? I don't know <laughs> because I normally, so I hope we are coaching a good time. I'm sorry. Did you say minor? I'm sorry. Let me know. Mm -hmm. He's on the phone, Mina. Sorry, he's on the phone. Okay, you should be in your email. All right, thank you. Mina, he's trying to get a quorum. Okay, let's see. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have, okay, we have one. I think we're close to a quorum there. Um, Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We already have eight people present, so we do have a quorum. All right, with that, let's officially call this meeting to order at exactly 7:10. Well, uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, before we move to the agenda, so let me share my screen and uh, and we can show the agenda. Okay. Everybody can see the agenda? Yes. Okay. Before we go to roll call, something we didn't get to do. Uh, let's do greetings and introduction. Anybody like to go? Again, this is our second meeting, so everybody knows who's who. So we could start with uh, Naomi. Could you please introduce yourself? and who you are and, uh, and, and your relationship with the community board. 
Well, good evening. Let me turn on my video. Good evening. My name is Naomi Baptiste. I am a resident of the Crown Heights community. Um, uh, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Uh, I was a school safety agent for over 19 years with the department, a police department, um, slash DOE. I was a um, citywide trainer for about 16 of those years, um, meaning that I trained mostly everybody in the five boroughs, even in Staten Island. And um, now I'm recently retired. Um, also, I'm part of the Community Education Council for District 17. I'm also a parent leader and the PTA president for PS221 um, on Empire Boulevard, the Loventure uh, Toussaint School. And um, I have two children, 10 and 8. One goes to 221. The other one, he goes to, he's outsourced. Um, to District 16, because at the time, they didn't have a District 75 school in District 17. So that's what made me want to join the Education Council to help my son. So hopefully I can bring him back to District um, 17, because there's more programs available in District 17. Um, and um, I really like what I do. I like to talk. Very community Communitive, and I like to um, <clears throat> help my community. I've been in the Crown Heights area for over 30 years or more. I live in um, what we call the Hasidic community. I live on President between Troy and Schenectady, um, and um, I really like it. So I thank you for your time, and any questions, comments, concerns, I'll be here until it's time for my kids to go to bed, okay? Okay. All right. So now me choose the next person. Oh, uh, I choose Julia. Hi, I'm Julia Bryant. I am. Um, I've been on this um, Parks and Recreation and Culture Committee for this is I think my third year. Um, I am on it because uh, primarily I was interested in protecting the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. And now I am interested because now I've been here for a while. So, and I'm going to pick um, Miss Brenda Begon. Hello, that's me. Good evening, everybody. I am Brenda Pagan, Brenda Hawkins Pagan, community member. Been in Crown Heights all my life. Brooklyn, I born and bred. Um, what else do you want to know? I'm a foodie. I love food. And eight o'clock is really my bedtime. I just want you to keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm an early morning person now. Um, and uh, I am happy to be a part of the Parks and Brett Committee to volunteer to assist in any way shape or form that I can except lifting and toting and carrying so don't think about that Nicholas because I know that field day thing is coming don't think about me in those regards but <laughs> I am very happy to assist in any way I can in the community and I'm just happy to meet all you folks. It's good to know that other good folks are out here, ready, willing, and able to help the rest of the community. That's it for me. It's someone else. It's the next person. I don't know who's next. Who I can't even see all these names on my screen. Who's David Romeo? Ah, that's right. I am David Romeo. Okay. <laughs> How you find out? <laughs> All right, my name is David Romeo. I have been in Crown Heights for probably 40 years this year. Um, attended Medgarvis College. Um, was there when we started looking for new accommodations. Um, was involved in 
getting our new campus on Bedford Avenue and all that good stuff. But other than that, I, you know, I've left, the, left my girl since in the 80s. But I continue to live in the community, and I want to see our community prosper. That's why, you know, I, I, you know, I became involved with the community board. Um, this is my second full year, and basically, you know, what, I, what, what my plan was is to sit down and learn from the others who have been on the committee for some time so that, you know, I could give my best to the committee. So, you know, sometimes I, you know, most times I attend the meeting and I, you know, I listen and stuff like that. And if I have ideas, I will pass on. And that's what I'm, you know, I want to do, you know, contribute my ideas to bettering our community. And I am, you know, I am very happy with the turnout that, you know, we constantly get. I miss the face-to-face, but since this is, you know, Zoom and whatever, I, you know, I don't have those facilities. I, I tune in on the phone. So, but I, you know, I really prefer the face-to-face. And that's basically what it is. That's who I am and that's who I am. Okay, please tell someone. If you could see the name. No, no I can't. No, I, I don't know who is next. Um, yeah, I see Calvin. Excuse me? Uh, uh, we call him one Calvin. By the name Calvin. Oh. Uh, okay. Calvin. Calvin, on mute. Calvin Lomax. Hey, Kevin, uh, anything else you want to add or pick the next person? Are you, are you talking about me, Kevin Lomax? Yes, we are asking everybody to introduce themselves. This is our second meeting, so we're trying to get to know each other. Oh, sure, yeah, no. I didn't know if he was calling a different Kelvin, but uh, sure, no. Um, Kelvin, I'm sure, first. Yeah, I would love to uh, introduce myself. My name is Kelvin Lomax. I'm the park manager. Um, I got promoted to park manager in 2017 from uh, from the Bronx to Brooklyn, and um, I've been in the um, in that and in, in, in the parks department for over 30 something years. So, um, just been uh, getting familiar with a different borough, being that the majority of my career was in the Bronx. But uh, Brooklyn is lovely. I, I, I like the I guess layout or um, the way um, the uh, brownstones and things like that um, are on certain um, blocks and avenues. But um, other than that, um, keep it short. Uh, if you guys need me, um, um, it's easy to get my email, kelvinlomax.parks at parksnewyorkcity.gov and, and um, I can try to just be a, a, a bridge in between um, with the community needs. And that's that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I'll call somebody else. Uh, it's not our friend, uh, Amy. Can you hear us? Amy, I can you hear us? I'm Amy. Oh, okay. Maya? Hi. Hi, this is Maya. I, I'm sorry. This is my second year on the board um, and on the... I'm sorry if there's an echo. I'm in my car. So. I'm second year on the committee. Um, about me, I've lived in Brooklyn for about 18 years. Uh, 17 of those years have been in the Town Heights, Prospect Leverage Garden area. I am an avid runner. I joined the board, and I'm happy to be on the Park Recreation and Culture Committee. To, um, I love the park. <laughs> 
number one thing. Um, like I said, I'm an avid runner. I just completed the New York City Marathon, so that's all I'm going to talk about if you ask me to think about myself. Um, <laughs> aside from that, I'm happy to be here and willing to help wherever I can. Thank you. Amy said she was on the phone and she doesn't have a microphone. Uh, let's go to Ms. Uh, uh, Binder, Ainsley Binder. Hi, um, my name is Ainsley Binder and um, I live in Prospect Leopards Gardens. I've been here for 26 years, but I've lived in Brooklyn for 36 years. Um, and uh, I, my connection to the committee is that I've been the regional commissioner of Brooklyn AYSO Youth Soccer uh, League. We play over at the parade ground um, and we pull from all, a large part of Brooklyn, but definitely from this area, um, all the neighborhoods that are kind of around Prospect Park or, you know, our primary, um, catchment areas, but we would love to, you know, have as many kids from District 9 as possible. I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, there are no tryouts. Everyone plays, um, very supportive, all volunteer organization. So, you know, just trying to get the word out there for people, because a lot of times people, you know, the further east you go, people aren't aware of what's happening kind of over at the parade ground. So, um, yeah. That's that's our mission. <laughs> Thank you. I think Richard Bilber. Richard Bilber is next. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. But you can't see me. Yes, I can. I saw you earlier. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You see me now? Uh, hold on. Yes, I think so. I can't see myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, I can see you. Yeah. All right. We'll just uh, deal with it. Uh, Hello, everybody. Uh, uh, Nick and I go back to Brooklyn Tech High School when uh, we were, uh, uh, let's see, taking care of kids for a full day and giving them everything we've got. And they were great kids. Mm -hmm. And so I've been retired now for over four years. And uh, the reason Nick invited me here was because of my connection in the art scene. I'm uh, involved with the Brooklyn Museum as a docent for the last few years. I'm also teaching a class in uh, art history to the retirees through the Brooklyn, uh, to the United Federation of Teachers has a retiree program. And uh, I have a sort of subspecialty in art history. And I'm also an exhibiting artist. Um, I've also had a very strong connection for 35, 40 years now to the West Indian community and Caribbean community in general. I do live in uh, Lefferts Gardens and um, <clears throat> been living here now 25 years. My wife, Selena, is originally from Jamaica. So we go to Jamaica a lot. And uh, I have uh, good friends from other Caribbean islands, Trinidad, Haiti, and so forth. So you could say I'm a Caribbean file. <laughs> By the way, are you still hearing me? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, well, um, well, I'm kind of honored to be on this uh, panel. I This is only my second time around. The people sound great. You sound lovely, interesting. I'm, I'm entranced. I'm, a, I'm active as a lot of you are with a lot of different things. So my time is a little stretched. Uh, and recently I've been caring for a mother who needs 24 hour care. So that's been very demanding. She doesn't live with me, but nonetheless, uh, I'm sure some of you can relate to that. So that's it. Uh, I'm looking forward to meeting you guys again and gals. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we Karin, is there anything you could tell Amy? Maybe she doesn't know using the phone. I could she uh, turn on her microphone or start something. And I think uh, uh, the person who haven't presented is our chair, Fred Baptist. Uh, can you guys hear me? We can hear you now, Amy, yes. 
Okay. Yeah, it's, I wasn't at my computer, so I couldn't. Un- but I was unmuted on my phone. Oh, you're anyway, on your phone. long story. Okay. Yeah, I told you I was on the phone, so I'm sorry. Um, I I'm hi everybody. I'm familiar with a lot of your names because it seems like most people uh, in this committee have been very active on the community board. This is my first go around on the parks committee. I have been on the environmental committee for the past two years. And I've been a board member for about, I think, six years. I haven't really counted. Um, uh, I know Nick is very active. He has been involved in virtually every committee meeting that I have been in. So I know that he attends lots of committees. Um, I'm also a Crown Heights resident. I've lived in Crown Heights for 11 And I've lived in New York City in three boroughs, Manhattan, the Bronx, and now Brooklyn, for over 20 years. And I am looking forward to seeing what this committee will take care of in the coming months. And that's it for me. Uh, Next is uh, Mr. Baptiste, our chair, for those of you who don't know. Nicholas, thank you so much. Uh, um, I'll try and be very quick. My name is Fred Baptiste, as Nicholas said, I, I currently serve. It's my pleasure and privilege to serve as the chair of Committee Board 9. And uh, a was lifelong Brooklyn resident, born in Crown Heights, raised in Flatbush. As a young man, I came uh, to Crown Heights and uh, got married and raised my family. This is home. Uh, I, I love the community. Uh, and just listening to stories here, this is part of the reason why CB9 is so wonderful. Uh, and I just really want to just, just to keep this brief, um, I've been on the board about 10 years, uh, served as chair, this is my third year serving as chair. And all I have to say is that, you know, these committees, your presence, I, I have to say thank you because this is what drives the board and this is what enables us to do what we do. Uh, I, I just want to say that we honor and respect the sacrifice that you make because everyone here is accomplished, busy, you have family, lives, distinguished careers. So I'm just, thankful and grateful that you you found it worthy um, of your time to come and be part of this committee. Uh, I just want to say again, thank you. Um, and uh, from, you know, on behalf of the committee you and anything that you need as well. Uh, and just, we're looking forward to a fantastic year under the leadership of uh, fearless leader, Nicholas Almanor. Um, thank you very much. I will just be joined by Mr. Ethan Losebel Gravy. He'll introduce himself. We're going to do a, a little bit of housekeeping and then we're going to go to his presentation. Ethan, let everybody know who you are. Great. Thank you. Um, so thanks for having me today. Uh, I'm Ethan Lustig. Oh, Grabley. Uh, I'm the uh, Director of Community Affairs over at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. Uh, and it's uh, a pleasure to be here. I'm looking forward to telling you guys about um, some of the fun stuff we've got going on at the garden and some of the things we're planning for uh, the winter and the spring. Uh, so whenever you guys are ready for me, I am ready to go. Okay. Well, I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping. As of last meeting, we didn't establish a vice chair and a secretary. What I like to do now is to open the floor for nomination or people will be interested in fulfilling those positions. So that sort of floor is open for either nominate somebody or nominate yourself for vice chair and secretary. And especially the secretary is very important because uh, you gotta turn in the minute very quickly because I think we probably will start a new system. So at this point, is there anyone who's interested to nominate themselves as uh, vice chair. If we are more than one people, we'll do an election at the end. I nominate Mina to be vice chair. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Mina, is that okay with you? Yes, that's that's what she has to accept. So that's right. Is she oh. here? <laughs> I'm here. I'm sorry, I was muted. Um, 
I was thinking more of you as the vice chair, and I was going to nominate myself as possible secretary, but either or, I'll be here regardless. I, 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 did, I did vice chair already, and I'm okay. interested in being the secretary. So why don't you move up? Okay. Sure. Okay. Okay, she's okay, she's nominated. Okay, is there anybody else? I'm sorry, this is me and I happen to be on a phone call. Did I miss anything? I heard something. Yeah, we're check. going to nomination for vice chair. Oh, okay. You can nominate yourself or nominate somebody else. Oh yeah, I want to nominate myself, Naomi Baptiste. Well, Okay, so we have two nominees. What we'll do, or oh, well, before I do that, I have to close the issue. Are there any nomination? Are there any nomination? Good time, and we we'll close nomination. Are there any nomination? So what we'll do toward the end of the meeting, we'll have an election to choose which one is going to be the vice chair. So now. Seeing no more nomination, I declare nomination closed. Now I'm going to open nomination for secretary. I think, uh, Julia, you express. Uh, Nicholas, I, I nominate myself for secretary. Are there any other nominations? Okay, are there any nomination? I do, once I see the third time, nomination will be closed. Are there any nomination? At this point, nomination are closed. Since there are no other candidates for nomination, we can declare that Ms. Julia Pagan is now the secretary for the Parks and Creation and Community Committee. So we'll come back and do the election later. At this point, we will so uh, go to Mr. Lostigal Grabi for his presentation. Um, oh, no, no, before that, we need to approve the minutes. I'm sorry, I just forgot that. So now I will, sh I'm gonna switch over to the, the minutes. Let me see, okay, if everybody can see, these are the minutes for last week. Is there any addition, subtraction, or modification to that unit? Nicholas, can you scooch it up? Because all I see is names. Can you see? You want me to zoom it up? Do something so I can see more. How about that? No, darling. I I I, I can see that fine now. But there were activities. Move it oh, up no. so that you can. All I see is who was here. She means zoom out, Nicholas. Zoom out so you can see the whole content. She means right. So we couldn't send it to you because we didn't get it early enough. Normally we will have it before the meeting, and that's why we're helping. So this was the people that attended, and this is the meeting started. Uh, let me. Let me okay. We have public commentary from Ms. Bond regarding the Bedford Amory. Can everybody read and see what's there? Yes, keep going. We're good. Okay. Then we had the uh, comment from Ms. Baptist regarding DYTT. Then we went into old business where we these are uh, we have uh, this designation of uh, various cultural institution representative okay mm -hmm. then uh, we say we didn't talk too much about was community garden and we wanted to table this discussion. Oh, we, we tabled uh, it because we were waiting for Brenda. Yeah, well, that's part of our new agenda. So we're going to go over that. Okay, and then we did a small discussion about the uh, family fun field day, which is going to be a growing discussion. And that is the extent of the 
minutes. Uh, is there anything else anyone would like to add to this based on what happened the last time? Then we're going to vote to approve those minutes. I make a motion that we accept the minutes. Is there a second? Anybody would like to say motion? I second the motion. Second. You second it. Yeah, okay. So all in favor? I mean, discussion first. Any discussion? Seeing, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, no. Aye. And I could have called for a vote by acclamation. Any abstention? I abstain. Okay, one abstention. And what's uh, who, who abstain? Bagan. All right. So we're going to notice that everybody voted in favor with abstention. Julia, you can take that note for us. We could get started with that. So the uh, motion passed. Different attention. So let's get back to our agenda. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Are we going to get a copy of these minutes or yeah. where, where well, are they? This minute will be published on the CB9 website. Okay. Um, Nicholas, I want to make a note that they actually don't get published because if you go to look for them, you can't find them. Can you just um, see about sending them? That. Hi, Julia. We'll make sure that they get updated as long, along with our website. We're currently updating that right now. So once the website is updated, we'll be making sure that everything is up to date. In the meantime, you can always just email the office and request a copy of the minutes, okay? Okay, because that, okay. I'm not happy about that. Let me just leave it there. Of course. Okay. Okay. Going back to the agenda. Okay. Minutes has been approved. Let's move to the fourth point in an agenda. Public uh, botanical garden presentation followed by public commentary. Mr. Lustigal Grabi, the floor is yours. Would you like us to, would you like to share screen? Uh, yes, that would be helpful. All right, Pani, can you give him, make him a co-host and allow him to share screen? I'm gonna stop sharing. Great, and I will just get started. Um, since I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys a little bit uh, before I pull up um, the screen share. Um, so, you know, first, uh, you know, thanks again for having me. It's always a, a pleasure to come out and speak with you guys. Um, so what I had really hoped to do, um, but we aren't quite ready to do it yet, and I may need to come back um, at some point in the spring, is about a year and a half ago, uh, we were given a grant by the <clears throat> New York State Devi uh, Department of Environmental Conservation. Um, and as part of that grant, uh, uh, we, uh, you know, we were funded to do what's called a tree inventory and study and management plan. Um, so this is, is this part of a statewide initiative that, that the state is doing uh, to kind of take a better inventory um, and create management plans for uh, the state's urban forests. Um, and we are a, a steward of a big, a big piece of that in Brooklyn. Um, and so this is really um, the first time that We've done this kind of like high level analysis of our of our um, our tree collection um, and really, really interesting findings. Um, you know, one thing that we're looking at very closely is sort of what are the benefits um, that we're getting uh, from our urban forests um, to help sort of make the case for advocacy and, and, and you know, dollars for care and maintenance, all, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and so really, really fascinating stuff. Incredible to see kind of, um, you know, the real world impacts that these trees are having on our on our communities. Um, but that study is not quite ready yet. Um, so when when I when I have the 
all of that ready, um, I'm actually not going to come. Well, I'll be there, but you know, I'm going to bring in um, some of our in-house experts to kind of pre present that to you guys. Um, and so that's going to be really exciting. So I hope to come back and do that uh, in a couple months when we are when we are ready to do that. Um, but um, for today, I'm just going to tell you guys a couple a uh, couple fun things we've got going on. Um, the last time I was here, we spoke a little bit about education uh, at the garden. But one thing that we really neglected to mention uh, was community greening. And so I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about what we're doing there. Uh, and I will share my screen um, and pull up the community. Um, so this is our website, uh, if you've never been there. Um, under garden resources, um, you'll see there's the community greening programs tab. Uh, this is one of our sort of, uh, Actually, well, it used to be part of our horticultural department, but now it's it's part of our education department. Um, this is an office that does a lot of really incredible work out in the community, um, particularly around um, you know sort of assisting the gardeners in Brooklyn um, with sort of resources and skills and and all kinds of amazing things. Um, and you know, they're sort of that's broken up into a few different exciting programs. Um, and I just wanted to tell you quickly about some of those. Some of you guys may have heard of the Greenest Block in Brooklyn contest. Um, so that was kind of on a little bit of a hiatus during the pandemic. We'd kind of scaled it back, um, but we're anticipating that it's going to come back full force um, for 2022. Um, and there were a lot of, um, I know the first year that I, I was here, the winner was over in CB8, the winning block. Um, and I know that Blocks and CB9 have won in the past. Um, and so, you know, uh, we're expecting a, a spirited comp competition this next year. Um, and we're really excited to be bringing that back uh, at full force. Um, another really critical program for us um, that I wanna make sure you guys are all aware of is the Brooklyn Urban Gardener Certificate Program. This is our sort of uh, hybrid education certificate program that not only is giving folks sort of the gardening know-how, um, but also the sort of the leadership uh, and community building skills uh, to go out into their community and not only sort of take part in gardening projects and community greening projects, but actually lead those projects. And many of our, our, our we call them our bugs. Many of our bug graduates, our bugs have gone on to do some really incredible things. Many of them have started um, their own sort of greening organizations hyper locally in their neighborhoods um, and have really done tremendous, tremendous things. Um, that is a competitive program. Uh, we only take a certain number of folks every year. So that way it keeps the class size small and it you know creates a really, really meaningful experience for uh, our participants. Um, those applications go up in the spring. And I, what I'd love to do is uh, let the community board office know once that happens. Uh, and I would love for you guys to uh, sort of partner in uh, letting folks know that those are up and, and how to apply and, and helping us get that information out there. Uh, that, that would be fabulous. Um, in addition to the bug program, we also do what's called the uh, Community Garden Alliance. Um, not as big as the first two. This is our program where uh, we are doing a lot of support for community gardens. Um, we have a relationship with a, a really large percentage of the gardens uh, in the city. If you know of a garden that's not uh, working with us, uh, feel free to reach out, let us know. We would love to be helpful in any way that we can. Um, uh, we, we do a lot of uh, distributions of supplies, a lot of seedlings, a lot of um, technical help. Uh, we have folks that go down and, and almost sort of like consult for the garden uh, to you know, give them info uh, on, on things that they can be doing. Um, so that's a really incredible program as well. Um, you know, sort of a little bit smaller in scale, um, but we also do the uh, tree steward program where we uh, support folks who wanna be tree stewards around the city. Um, and then making Brooklyn Bloom is sort of our annual uh, Brooklyn gardening conference. Um, and the folks who attend that are usually 
you know, uh, you know, they're gardeners from around the borough, but it's a lot of folks from the community gardens that we work with, uh, tree stewards, our bugs, uh, different greening organizations uh, come down. That's a really, really amazing event uh, every year. It's a free conference um, that that is sort of like a real, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling for the right world, word, but it's a real, um, uh, you know, sort of synergistic meeting of all of the of the of the gardeners in Brooklyn. Um, you know, exchanging best practices, resources, all kinds of fabulous things like that. Um, and it, it's also a lot of fun, from from what I'm told. Uh, we did have uh, virtual conferences in, in the past. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm not sure what the plan for this year is um, for this spring. Hopefully, we'll be able to mount that in person. Um, but you know, it may it may be uh, partially virtual as well um, this year. But you know, we'll definitely make sure that that you guys know all about that. Um, so that's a little bit about our community greening uh, work that we're doing. Um, really, really exciting stuff. Uh, and I'm glad to be able to tell you guys about that. So one other thing that we've got uh, coming up, uh, a really exciting event. Uh, I don't know if, if folks have sort of seen all of the activity around this. Um, and this is uh, Lightscape. Uh, you can sort of see the banner um, up on our website. This is a uh, I'm going to I'm going to show you guys uh, a little bit of info about it just to give you the uh, the flavor um, Lightscape. It's a, it's a I think it's about a mile, if I'm not mistaken, an illuminated trail. Uh, this is supposed to be an incredible experience. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. It's not fully up and installed, um, but it's it's opening up uh, at the end of this week on the 19th. Uh, on Friday night. It, it's supposed to be beautiful. Um, so if, if you're interested, come on down. Uh, we'd love to have you. Um, and this is the first year that we're doing this. Um, this is, a, a, you know, a, it's been a really big undertaking. Uh, these kinds of events, um, I'm told, have become more popular around the country. Um, the Botanic Garden in Chicago does one that's supposed to be very nice. Um, I, I'm not sure if the New York Botanic Garden does one. I know they do their train show. Um, so this is, you know, I, I think that might be the, the one thing that they do. Um, and, you know, obviously this is sort of a smaller group. This isn't really sort of the pitch, um, but, but to help you guys understand sort of where we're at as an institution, um, this is, you know, obviously the last few years have been really tough on all the cultural institutions in the city, um, you know, Obviously, we missed, uh, uh, you know, uh, we were closed for a while, um, and that that has a big impact on us. Um, particularly, we've we haven't had our um, our cherry blossom festival, which financially is a big um, a big part of our uh, sort of the puzzle for how we how we make our our budget work. Um, so this is this is one of the ways that we're looking to kind of diversify and not not have all of our eggs in one basket. Um, and so, you know, to make sure that we, we can kind of uh, support all of the other work that we're doing um, to, to give you guys a little bit of a better sense. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to tell you guys about, um, this is something that I've been trying to get the word uh, out more about. Um, I, it's a program I'm really proud we're doing, but I, I, I look at the numbers every week uh, and I love to see more people taking advantage of this. Um, which is, you know, during the winter, obviously, we, you know, we, we, we become uh, pay what you wish, but every day we <clears throat> have free tickets available uh, for anyone who wants them. Uh, it's about, I, I think it's about 20% of all of our tickets are free. Um, and I don't, I don't think enough people know about this. So I wanted to show everyone how you can access free tickets to the garden any day you want to get them. Uh, and, you know, tell your friends all about this uh, because uh, we'd love to get more people accessing this. Um, so if you went on our website, uh, you'd hit visit, you'd hit, you know, hours of admission, uh, you know, and you basically hit the button for, for, you know, the regular way you'd buy tickets. If you're not a member, you'd hit I'm not a member and go to buy your tickets. Um, and let's say we wanted to go... Uh, you know, on Wednesday, on the 17th. Uh, tickets are great all day. We're closing at 3.30 these days. Uh, and let's say I want to come in from 990 Washington Avenue. I would hit get tickets. And this is, this is, I think, where folks are not necessarily seeing it. 
there are a bunch of different kinds of tickets as you can see here. There's the regular adult tickets, student tickets, senior, children under 12, affiliated organizations, corporate, all the way down here at the bottom, you see community tickets. And this is a program that we launched um, right when we opened up uh, back after the pandemic. Uh, for the first time, it was something we wanted to sort of give back to the community. The first month was free, and then we continued to offer free tickets daily to anyone uh, who wanted one. We really didn't want, um, you know, the financial side of things to be a reason folks weren't enjoying the garden. Um, and, and, and now, you know, we've, we've sort of done some work in, and, and, you know, now you'll see that it's, it's sponsored. Uh, I think every month there's a different sponsor. Uh, now I, you know, we see the Amy Goldman Foundation is sponsoring uh, and the JP Morgan Chase, um, but, you know, that periodically changes. Um, and so you can go in there and you could reserve up to your, you know, six tickets uh, and you just hit get tickets and and there it is. Um, and then, you know, you would continue through and you check out and all that. Um, so that's there. That's on the website. That's every day. Um, I, I don't think I've I've seen a day sell out uh, yet. So it's it's, you know, not it's not it's not difficult to get or anything like that. Um, so please let folks know this is this is out there. This is available. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, is that all year round or is it just in the winter? This is so this is all year round. Um, and and what I was noting about the winter, uh, if I wasn't clear, is um, during the winter, it's you know, it sort of becomes all free. Uh, it's just suggested donation. Um, because I, you know, look, I, I personally think the garden is beautiful in the winter, but I think you know, we under we understand that it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's a, a, of our four seasons, it's not our best. Um, so we, we don't, we don't really charge admission in the winter. Um, but, um, uh, and, and actually I would say fall is very underrated. Uh, I didn't hit our, I didn't hit our plants in bloom page, um, but check that out. The garden is looking beautiful. It's sort of, we're, we're in, we're in peak leaves right now. Um, so come on down. Um, it's, it's beautiful and it's not, it's not too cold just yet. Um, and that's, that's all I've got. Uh, I don't know if we have time, uh, so I defer to the chair, but uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take, uh, take some questions. Hi, uh, Chair and Ethan, this is Amy and uh, Ethan, we have met. I don't know yes, if you uh, remember me, yeah. Yes, yes, but I yeah. do, I do work on the weekends at the Botanic Gardens. I'm a guest visitor center person, but oh, I wanted great. to mention also, that uh, I, you used to have free days. And I remember that it was a Tuesday all day and it was Saturdays before noon. And I'm surprised that the people are still coming in and say, when are your free days? Or are you free today, Saturday? And um, I, I'm, a, I'm surprised that they're unaware that that has been put on hold or ended probably about two years ago, pre-pandemic. So, uh, so any in this committee that if you do have... Um, uh, you know, people who took advantage of those free days or uh, or were looking for free days for the garden. Like Ethan said, the community tickets are an excellent way to access the garden every day that it's open, every day. The only day that the garden is closed is Mondays. But it's really it's a really nice way to make the garden accessible to everybody in the community. And I just uh, want to reiterate that. I think it's very nice. Thank you. Hi, Ethan. Um, are any of the indoor areas open? Yeah, so our indoor areas are open. Uh, our conservatory is open. Um, the only caveat is, um, like all cultural spaces in New York City, per the mayor's executive order, uh, you must be vaccinated to enter any of our indoor spaces. We don't check uh, cards for, um, for the grounds themselves. Um, if you need to use the restroom, there's no one checking vaccine cards, um, but that's sort of the only place you can go there. Um, but, but the conservatory, everything else is open. You just need to, you need to show your card. Uh, and, and of course you need to wear a mask, but otherwise, uh, conservatories are open and we are, we are very excited about that. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, Ethan, I have a question. 
Um, yes. Thank you for your, your wonderful presentation. Um, but I'm, um, one thing I didn't hear is um, any programs to entice the younger generation. You yeah, know, to, absolutely. You know, so, I, <laughs> so, so we have a very, we have sort of a huge uh, education, a uh, suite of education programs. Um, you know, d right now at this time of year, um, it, it, there's less sort of to talk about. Uh, we're doing a lot of, we're still doing a lot of stuff in our schools, um, but like our sort of our teen apprentice program, uh, all that kind of stuff really starts back up in the spring. Um, and then and then just, you know, uh, I don't know if, if you happen to have been at the last one, uh, the last time I came down, we actually um, spent about 20, 20 minutes um, going through all of our education programs in detail. Um, so I wanted to try to cover some of, uh, uh, you know, some other information. Um, but what, what I can do is the next time we come back um, and when I've got material on when everything is going to start up for the 2022 season, I'm going to make sure that the committee has that information. Um, and that'll be a, a, um, info about our, our teen programs, our sort of like our summer, our summer programs for young kids um, and, and everyone in between. Thank you. I have a question to Nicholas. Yes. Yeah. Maybe to even Mina. Um, last time we met, we made liaisons between people on our board, right. and people at community um, cultural um, institutions. I don't see that we have someone to the Botanic Garden. Um, oh. is, is, is there somebody there here who's going to do that? Because uh, Ethan, th this would be a good time for you to meet the person who. Uh, absolutely, and, and I could send all the information I I plan on following up with that person. That was going to be Naomi. Okay. Okay. So Naomi. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, I second. Yeah, Naomi Baptist was the best. Yeah. I mean, we could, we could use more than one. Uh, that, um, Naomi Baptiste is present. She's in the middle of cooking dinner for her kids. Right. So, what do you you, you call me? This is going to be part of the next thing on our agenda because we're going to try to get some kind of a report. So, this is part of our agenda. Are there any questions for Mr. Lustig Alvarez? No, I think it was a very good presentation, and I um, really enjoyed it, and I really want to take part in, uh, um, I think that's like a hall of lights or a walkway of lights mm -hmm. with my sons, because I have a 10 and an 8-year-old, so I think they'll very well enjoy it, so thank you. Reason, Naomi, just while we still have your attention, um, the reason why I was calling your name is that um, since you're going to be the liaison with Ethan, I wanted Ethan to get to see you so that the two of you could liaison and figure out, you know, he doesn't have to come to our meetings every month, but maybe he can talk to you every month so that um, we would know. Get updates. Yeah, give us Absolutely. updates. It's so nice to meet you, Naomi. And um... If you don't mind, I will um, uh, just because I, I see we don't we don't have a chat anymore. Uh, I will reach out to the board office tomorrow and get your info, and that way we can we can start to chat. Not a problem. I thank you so much. I look like a mess I'm in the middle of dinner. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and I'd love to liaison with you. Thank you, thank, thank you. you, Julia. Okay. Okay. Uh... Well, we're going to move on to public commentary. We're going to try to keep it short. Uh, we're going to keep it to about uh, at most 10 minutes. It's now 8 o'clock. If we don't have any public commentary, we'll move on to the liaison reports. It's going to be a feature of our meeting or every meeting from now on. Um, what, what is that? Public commentary. Anybody would like to make some public commentary of general or specific nature regarding the committee or whatsoever? So the floor is open for that. You could just raise your hand or just speak up, say, I have something to say.
Uh, this is a I have a, hand, I have a hand raised if somebody else does it. In the meeting to get their set. Who's acknowledging the hands raised? Nicholas? Oh, I am either me or Kali. Kali? Let me go first and then me. All right, so we'll start with uh, Brenda, you know, you second? No, I, go ahead, Brenda. Okay, first, I would I would like a, um, the minutes from the meeting every time we have a meeting. I don't, you know, so if Khalid is still here, please just email me the minutes from the meeting every time we have a meeting. I, don't, I think we should all get them and be prepared for the next month. And also I'd like to know what happened when I wasn't here. So if I had received the minutes from the meeting, I could know what was going on. Um, my, I'm sorry, this is mine and my apologies. I only sent it to the table this morning. Otherwise you would have to have them before, yeah. Oh. Okay. So now we'll, I mean, uh, we will, I think we're going to have a requirement for them to be submitted 48 hours after the meeting, because I do need them for the executive committee meeting before I go, so, and uh, there may be some changes, there may be some aspect that, uh, I mean, some procedure that will make this process real fast, and then now uh, we're not completely concluded on that yet, so I cannot speak to it yet, okay, but for now on, Everybody should get the meeting before the meeting. And this is something I insist, that I would like to insist on because it helps quite a lot. And so, are we gonna be RS Khalid? Are we gonna be RSVP? And that's the first time I saw it was this evening, just before I came on. There was some an email reminder and it said to RSVP basically for the meeting to confirm that you were coming. Are we gonna do that every month? Is this this is new? So you don't need to RSVP for the committee meetings. You need to RSVP for the executive and the general board meetings. Uh, the, R, the, the committee meeting links, they're just available and any anybody, any member of the public can just click in and join. It's only that we just ask the committee members to confirm that they will be attending or not. So we can have a an idea of who will be participating just gotcha. for you know quorum re related reasons. Okay. And then for your requests regarding minutes, I will ask, um, you know, like Fred and Dante about uh, distributing that to the committee members, depending on availability. But at the very least, the recordings for the meetings that we have, they will definitely be up on our YouTube channel by the end of the week in which they occurred. So as this meeting is happening right now, tomorrow when I get in the office, I'll be uploading it to our YouTube channel and the whole recording will just be available for the public in general, okay? Okay, okay, so on YouTube channel. Yes, yes. And it's just a confirmation that we're doing now, which is fine, okay? I just wanna know what's going on. Thank you. Thank you can I be recognized? Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I'd like to follow up with, um, an event that happened from last meeting where um, we were supposed to get a presentation from Brooklyn Armory and they didn't show up. Mm -hmm. Can you see about scheduling them to show up? Um, we have not, I mean, we're at the cultural event, we're the cultural committee for this community and the Brooklyn Armory is, you know, like deciding that they don't need to come and talk to us. No, actually, we had them scheduled for the general meeting. Uh, I don't know if the uh, on the YouTube channel that presentation is available. You could see that because since they didn't come and contact them, they did the presentation at the general meeting for last month. So, Kali, is that also on the YouTube channel? It is. Yes. Yes. Well, if you like for us to go back, we could always invite them again. I don't think. Okay, I know. I, I, you know, I, I, I have very little confidence in what their presentation is, um, but my point that I'm, I'm making is, they were supposed to come to our meeting, mm -hmm. and so now, um, 
the way that we're going to get a presentation from them is that they went to the general meeting. Mm -hmm. And so if I want to know what they said, what they would have said to us, mm -hmm. I should go and look at the other presentation. Yes, you get a sense of that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and which meeting was, was this at that I'm going to that go? It was last uh, month, general meeting. So the last general meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. That was my comment. Okay, great. Are there any more commentaries? Yes. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, this is Naomi Baptiste. Um, one of the things that I wanted to, to, um, to present to the committee is if um, for the... PS221 school, uh, they don't have, because it's a school, oh, I'm sorry, hold on a second. So since it's a school that represents um, our Haitian community in our uh, neighborhood, uh, PS221, I was wondering how can we as a committee and maybe as a, um, maybe at the general meeting also, Try and get um, people aware of uh, like the Creole language in the neighborhood because um, in my research with being a PTA president, there's a lot of older um, seniors who speak Creole, some speak French, and um, they want to uh, be more uh, present in the school or in the community, but because of the language barriers, um, they're not able to. So I was wondering, how would we be able to help with getting like maybe a little workshop or something from our cultural committee that I'm on to get this uh, little jump started to probably help some of the families that's in our community that speak Creole and um, French? Just a question. Well noted. Mm -hmm. um, Naomi, I have a question. Are you- Go ahead. All right, okay, my question is, are you looking for a lessons for the parents to learn English or something else? No, it, it can be a twofold. It could be for parents to learn English, for people to learn Creole, to have um, children who speak, French, um, who speak English and have um, Creole descendants that they cannot speak to to probably learn the language and probably just spread it along because we do have a big uh, Haitian population in our neighborhood. And sometimes we don't get to address certain neighborhoods because of different things that are not brought up in certain um, certain community um, committees or communities. So what I'm saying is, is that if we can probably start at that school because the um, person that is named after is very prominent. Um, it was a very prominent person, and he has a lot of things in the Crown Heights neighborhood that is named after him, streets and um, hospitals. So I would believe that that would be something that, because we're a cultural board, that we can just probably uh, ignite and then can become an explosion later on. It doesn't have to start as big as um, teaching parents it can just start as a small workshop in the school and then maybe spread on to further do some more other things. Can I ask you to um, make that as a presentation for the next meeting? Oh, that's not a problem. I could do that. Okay, so why I can don't just you... do some research. I'll do some research first because I right, won't then... I won't then you ask us to do a thing as opposed to I understand you're this is public commentary. So at this point, I think what I'm understanding you to do is this is a problem and we should address it. My, mm -hmm. So the second step is if it's a problem and you want to address it, tell us what you'd like us to do okay. and then we could take it to the next step. Could you yeah, do I don't that? think it's a problem. I just think it's a um, minor misstep because um, like where I live, I'll just give you an example. Where I live at, there's a lot of things that don't get addressed because it's not a very uh, populated place. So like I like last time I was in a general meeting, and just is really short. Um, I spoke to um, Khalid in regards to the link for um, for the network or broadband in, um, in a general meeting talking about uh, getting free Wi-Fi. 
I live on President and Troy. There is no free Wi-Fi stations at President and Troy. The only free Wi-Fi station is at Fulton and Troy Avenue for myself. That means that I will have to go across to Nostrand Avenue in Eastern Parkway to get free Wi-Fi if the library wasn't open during the pandemic. So what I'm saying is, is that I'm just bringing it as something that might be a mishap that is not being known on my side of town in Community Board 9. So it's not a problem. I would just say maybe just a misstep or maybe something that's not addressed. So I won't have a problem with bringing it as a presentation to the, co um, to the community. It. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's not a <laughs> this is Amy. I just want to join in, um, just suggest something to Naomi. Um, those sound like really kind of key things that uh, actually money can help. And I think that... Um, I'm forgetting her name, but I know that they just renamed Rogers uh, Avenue in part after a prominent, I thought it was the Haitian person that you uh, had referred, but I don't know if that's what you were talking about. But I was wondering whose district you were in, if it were um, either Diana Richardson or, um, um, oh God, I'm blanking on the Senator's name. Zell Norman right Yes. Yeah, yeah. And if yes. you're in East so I just that that one element about the free Wi-Fi, I'm sure you have others, but I think that's important to put in your presentation because, I mean, that's a total misstep. And I and I would tell you, I thought you were talking about home Wi-Fi because I know that if you have Optimum in your area, which I think you might, they do have programs if you request them saying that why, you know, Internet connection is too expensive they do, based on, I think, uh, needs in a zip code, give discounted, very discounted rates to people in the area. But um, so that's another thing. Just bring up all the things that you feel like are not addressed in that neighborhood. And I think that the, the community board should be able to reach out to several people and say that these are gaps in, in community coverage. Just uh, a the suggestion. Other, the other thing to take into consideration is that um, that that internet access and broadband is part of the infrastructure bill that Biden just signed today. So your congressional um, representation, your, your federal at the federal level, that's that's another place to uh, activate. I thank you so much for the input, and um, I I sure will because I was one. Of, I just happened to be one of the um, parents during the pandemic that did not have internet service at the time and I did go through Optimum at that time or they had a free program with Spectrum but because the lines by my house is covered by Verizon I, I wasn't able to get that so um, I was just noting that because that happened to me before I even became on the board so I'm just making these things um, prevalent because sometimes it becomes a miss like i said a misstep it's not a, it's not a nothing on purpose it's just that maybe no one from this area had that um that uh that uh disparity but i did with two kids during the pandemic so i'm just saying now that's not the that's not a, a problem or issue now but i think there's still people might be going through the same thing but they just don't know how to articulate or who to maneuver to get to and that's one of my reasons why I really wanted to join the board because there's a lot of people that don't know how to articulate to a certain extent to voice their opinions because they're so frustrated and it comes out angry. But I'm not angry at you personally. I'm just angry at the situation that I'm in. So I thank you for all your input and I'll make sure that I go back in my books of my old training days that I deliver the best presentation that I can um, as a, you know. <laughs> Appreciate you, Naomi, and then we will revisit that because we're coming to the end of our public commentary, and we'll go to move to the next step. The next Nicholas, you have Fred who has his hand raised. The next of our, we could always go back to that. The next of our agenda will be uh, any reports from those liaison. What kind? Mr. Nicholas, Nicholas Mr. Fred Baptiste has his hand up, Mr. Nicholas. Oh, I'm sorry, because I'm very strict at trying to get off the agenda. Go ahead, Mr. Baptiste. No, thank you very much, and I'll try and be very quick. 
first of all, uh, Baptiste, thank you so much for, for bringing up the part about the culture, the, the language part of it. Uh, I'll admit that uh, my, my Creole is cringeworthy as well. Um, and, and those are the kinds of ideas sometimes by bringing those things up, especially in a committee setting, it, you know, it, it perhaps, you know, hopefully allows us to say, okay, well, listen, what resources and do the outreach to see what's in the community that can address certain things. Exactly what, oh, if, are there people that can address some questions? Thank you for bringing that's really the purpose of these committees. Uh, going back to Ms. Pagan's point about the minutes, Khalid, uh, let, let, we won't even have a discussion about that. Just as soon as you get the minutes, please forward them to all the committee members so that way they always have them. Uh, I think the process will be that when you get them, remember they're in draft, so they're not the official document. Uh, you know, the chair is already, you know, has it as a process where it's like once you get to the meeting, then you'll make whatever corrections and then you'll look at it, you'll adopt it as meeting. But otherwise, I think it's okay, it's fair. Whenever they're done, just send them out and you'll correct them, you know, you make any corrections as necessary at the meetings. Uh, there was one last piece, and, and I think going back to the, the entire question about the internet and the broadband, I think it's important. That's why we have these meetings. That's why it's important the public commentary happens because as a committee and as a board, we don't know what we don't know. So this is really the setting by which now if we know that there are gaps in terms of the infrastructure. That's what enables us to actually try and intervene and do whatever we need to do and engage. Um, but otherwise, keep those comments and keep those questions coming. I just want to say that very briefly. Thank you. Are there anybody else? Because the next seven agenda will be the reports for the different liaison. And what I like to add to that, and hopefully for next month, I would like to see if anyone for the different liaison will come up with some kind of activity from each of the different institutions you are linked to. So that way we could set up the agenda what we're going to do for the, for the rest of the year. If you could think of anything else, any proposal. So anybody would like to make any report on what action item they have been done so far based on our last meeting for their particular uh, cultural institution. I see Julia, her hand up, yes. Go ahead, Julia. I'm hi. I'm I'm Julia still. Um, um, I am the liaison with the um, Prospect Park um, liaison yes. association or whatever. It is the liaison. So I'm the liaison to the liaison. So they are not alliance. alliance. Thank you, Brenda. Um, they are not the Prospect Park. So, right. So. Calvin, Kelvin, you are the actual park, and this is the a liaison to the park, to Prospect Park. Um, and it was a well-attended meeting, and um, two things came out of it that are noteworthy. It's one is there are a group of um, Rastafarian, I, I don't want to be disparaging, I that's my understanding who they are and that they use the what I would call the northern part of the park and that they are now working with the Prospect Park um, Alliance to have gardeners assigned to sections of the park and that the gardeners would have in their possession at any given time uh, they're working this out, um, a volunteer sheet, because what happens is if you want to volunteer for the Prospect Park, you sort of have to go through as much paperwork as if you were going to adopt a dog. And they people just really want to just come and have an afternoon at the park and, you know, be helpful. And the, um, again, uh, to, to to piggyback on what Fred said, people don't know what they don't know. And so the Prospect Alliance is trying to get as much information out of people as possible so that they can connect them with the next time. And it's very off-putting to people, very off-putting. So um, the gardeners will now just have a 
volunteer sheet and you sign away. I'd like to volunteer for the day. And they put it in their pocket and then they give you a shovel or a rake or whatever. And you could start to volunteer like right then. That's, that's the process that they'd like to have. And to that end, they'd like to have more people um, working with them in, in, the, um, in the park. Um, and then the next thing is I alerted them that CB9 would like to have a family fun day in um, Prospect Park. And I told them we did not know the date or the time, but um, what we would like to set up between the Alliance and myself, what I suggested to them is that the Alliance and, and CB9 would have an ongoing um, event building events so that if we were to help clean up an area um, during the winter and then plant something during the spring and um, garden and, and nurture it into the you know to the end of the summer that this area where we were going to have the family fun field day would be an area that would already be known to the community. And then we both get something out of it. We would be able to give something back to the park and that the park would help us um, communicate that we're having an event. So that um, my concern has always been that we're gonna say, we're having the event in two weeks and nobody knows about it except for us. But if you started building it now that we're doing this, you know, because we're gonna have a fun day in June because we were doing this and we're having a fun day in June and that it continues to accumulate. So those, those are my, uh, that's my notes. Oh, and, and then I also have another uh, liaison is that um, I contacted BAM and they were interested and the basic question was, what do you want us, what do you want from them? So those, those, those are my reports. Thank you, Julia. And that's the reason I like the question from Ben, and that's why we're going to try to develop our wish list. So it will be a cultural organization to which we are connected and we are listening to. Anybody else would like to make a report in terms of the uh, reason assignment? Hi, uh, Nick or Julia, can I ask a question regarding that BAM um, kind of question that you left hanging in the air? Sure. Uh, I was just, uh, you know, just off the top of my head, I know a lot of cultural events at BAM are, I don't know, for me, they're pricey. I mean, I'm not dropping 60, 80 bucks to go to an event there. Um, but, you know, I'm sure like the garden, they may have a set aside of tickets that they offer um, for free. And I know that we're only one of probably about, I don't know, what is it, four or five um, surrounding community boards that they service, you know, like uh, within like virtually in their, their kind of perimeter. Uh, perhaps they have a program where they would give the board, I don't know, 20 free tickets to events coming up, you know, or whatever. And it's a, in a way that we could offer them through uh, through committees, maybe this committee, maybe the um, health and human services committee that maybe address some, um, some senior citizens or, or other, you know, maybe they have something that they could offer us as far as free tickets for maybe some seasonal. So, esoteric that you need to have like a PhD in art to understand, but something that's really kind of a general type of, um, uh, yeah, I don't know, kind of, I don't know. I, I, I know that they have music there and stuff. And I think that'd be well attended. Hey, Amy, I, I caught the part where it was the youth and then what, do we have a senior? 
what would yeah what, no i think um francesca's um uh, uh, committee and i thought that was the hell i forget what it was called but i know she deals a lot with senior citizens and like that daycare right, for, out, what, what is what which committee would that be i no. i thought it was health or health and social human services service. or fred could fred would know so i don't know social services fred uh, health and what social services i i, I, I I don't know. Yeah, the health, the, the health, yeah, the, okay. the, the health and social services. Okay. Committee. So, but the so idea. I, 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 can, I can, I can, I can, I can see asking for free tickets for the young and for the old. Okay. So they're saying that they have to address the other community board. So you couldn't ask for that many, but maybe they have a program where they do offer the community boards in the vicinity some free tickets for events and they can give it to the board and the board can divvy it up among committees that can try to get it into the right hands. Yeah, I think it's, it's easy enough. Yeah, it's, it's easy enough for us to make the inquiry in terms of listen, what programs or what tickets do you have and everything. So, uh, Khalid, if, can we take a note of that one just so that way we can reach out to them and we can send them some, we can send them a letter and just to see what, what, what programs they do have available free low cost or whatever so that we can make them available to us to be residents. Okay and and Khalil then in that letter would you say use my name as a, that I'm the liaison as well? Most definitely I can I can make it I can definitely type up the generic template and share it with the committee so you all can you know confirm on what language you think is appropriate and the appropriate send senders as well. Why don't you, well, if you do that, then we're not, now we're waiting till December. We're not gonna get an answer to January. We've now missed a year. Okay. Why don't you send it between you, me and Nicholas and we'll get it out sooner. Un understood, okay. Would, uh, I think we could even invite them to one of our meetings also to present. Well, let's get the free tickets and then we can ask them to present. Okay, sounds good to me. Okay. Uh, moving on, anybody else, any liaison, designated liaison would like to say something, have a comment, bring a report, because I know the time is advancing. I'm very conscious about that. And um, I, I could give a report from the Brooklyn Museum. Correct, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, just a quick report on what's happening at the museum. There's, there's a, a big exhibition on Christian Dior that uh, is over the top. If you, even if you're a guy, you should go down and see it. But it's mostly women that are going down. It's it's unbelievable. Um, you might have to make reservations to get in there. Uh, there's a show on Andy Warhol coming up, which should be interesting. And I just wanted to let you know that I give tours of the American floor on the fifth floor. I'm sure a lot of you have been up there. And recently they're changing the narrative, if you will, to make it less, uh, you know, founding fathers centric and kind of settler centric and trying to insert more about Native American, African American, uh, Latino American, so forth into the conversation. So they have a lot of interesting uh, objects and artifacts that are on view. Um, in fact, there's a painting from Dominica back in the colonial period that's fascinating. Uh, and um, just to let you know that's happening, um, that's it. That's my report. I know it's getting late. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Okay. Uh, moving on on the agenda, we would like to go to the community garden. Brenda was not here last week, wanted to table it. I don't know if one now would like to come and say something and how we'll go first. My interest was to get an inventory of what's there because I've seen just a couple. Uh, I would like to find out how many of them are there and what are some of their needs. Well, now you would like to approach that because this is the access to table that for today. I am confused. I don't know what it is that you're asking. Let's clarify. I mean, we wanted to talk about it, and Julia said, well, this is what Brenda's interested in. So 
So let's go to the we, we were we were discussing the Maple Street Garden. Maybe what we may want to do to if you would volunteer to be a liaison for that area of this, so you could give us regular reports and stuff like that. Is this something you'd be interested in doing? You would like me to be the liaison for community, community gardens. Community gardens. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So because they have, they may have some needs, they may have some program, and I see the presentation that the Brooklyn Botanical did. Well, I see a lot of connection where we could bring resources to them. Hmm. Okay, not a problem. So uh, mm -hmm. I will look into that. Thank you, I appreciate it. I know next month is a very hard month because of all the holidays. So uh, some of this stuff may have to wait until uh, in January, but whatever you can get for our next meeting in December will be appreciated. So please note that uh, Wenda has volunteered to be our liaison for community gardens. Okay. And exactly what does that mean? What did you all discuss yeah. last week, uh, that, last month, about these are responsibilities? Yeah. Welcome to my world. <laughs> I'm not, how many of them are there? What are they doing and how we can help? These are the three things we have to know. They need um, money. Okay. Well, what I was now, saying, what, let's what start I, there I'm and I'll it. go on. Next month, I will have something to share with you about the needs of some of the community gardens. First, I, of course, I'll be calling on Khalid and whoever else is there to tell me the list of all the community gardens, right. but I'll do that on my own time now. <laughs> Yeah, I posted it's available on the city site also. In some cities. Brenda, yes, I can. I'm right sorry. I can talk you through the NYC facilities website where it lists the green spaces in our administrative district, okay? Lovely. You got it. Thank you. Hi, this is Amy again. I was just wondering uh, if this is a cultural. Um, Community, uh, a committee as well. Do we have a relationship or a liaison with BRIC? Uh, no, and actually we should. Someone yes, we do. Someone because BRIC came and spoke to us last year. Did you forget? I think I did. You forgot? Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, because when you think of BRIC, I thought about the, uh, there was one person in the youth committee was connected to BRIC, I keep associating them with that, that we should have BRIC also. If they did make the comment, now I remember that when they do make their request, that they, they do include the data from our community. So this is another institution we have to reach out to. Okay. Someone from our committee, I don't, I don't know if it was, um, reported in the minutes, but someone said that they were going to do brick. That was on the list that we, we had. Suang, who said she was going to be for, for the King's Theater. Oh. Okay, so that's why we But we didn't get anybody for brick. No, we didn't get anybody for brick. No, not those minutes there. How is this working? Okay. Is everyone taking up one institution? Is that what we're doing? I can Absolutely. I can do brick. I actually, I worked. I can do brick. I worked at uh, Celebrate Brooklyn over the summer, so oh. I got to know a bunch of those people, and um, so I could do it. Okay, perfect. Perfect. And now uh, this is what uh, Ms. Bender Binder 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 Binder. Okay. And Elisa Ainsley. Ain oh Ainsley Ainsley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know it, it's so tiny. I'm sorry. I. I don't just, okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess I just need to know what's involved being a liaison. So, so that what it is is what we want is free stuff. Basically, let's let's <laughs> break it down. We want free stuff, and okay, we, and and what you're gonna. What well, luckily, we're, celebrate Brooklyn is free most of the time, except when it's a benefit. <laughs> okay, okay, but but what we what we're looking for? Okay, two things. One, we're having. In in the June, we're going to have an event called Family Fun Day, Family Fun Field Day. Okay, that is going to be a, a CB9 event. Mm -hmm. So we would like to have everyone to like give us something 
for it because okay. we don't ask them in June for it. And then, right. oh, I wish you had asked us sooner. So as soon as possible when we get this particular event together. Right, okay. and, 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 but then in the meantime, what, what our idea was, and maybe it's more my idea than others, but um, our idea is that on an ongoing basis, that these institutes report back to us because right. what we've said is when they do funding, they sure as hell say that it's CB9. And when it's time to give us stuff, we're the last mm -hmm. people to get anything, you know, from them. And um, just so that you have an update, last time Brick was here, they gave us a long presentation. And at the end, they were basically, oh, and we don't have anything that we can give you free. Thank you very much. And mm -hmm. I was like, why did you waste our time? Okay. Like, okay, so I'll, I'll see, I'll see what I can Those are the points, okay? <laughs> All right. Okay, we are uh, now. I think we're going to go to voting resolution because it's eight thirty. So I don't want to keep people too much. And I would say let's table. I'm making a motion to table any, any more discussion of the CB9 Family Fund Fair before next meeting. So I'm putting that as a motion. Is there a second? The motion is that it's old business or that it's... Well, I want to put it for old business for next time. Okay. Because we, this is something we need to talk a little more about. Okay. And then uh, what we'll have now is the voting on who's going to be... Okay. Right sure. Okay. Is there any way, Khalid, uh, uh, would you read the list of the committee members? And then we're going to put up the vote for the nomination. We could do it by voice vote. OK. Is there any way you could help us with that? So we have two candidates. We have Naomi Baptiste and Ms. Legote. So uh, well, the only people can vote are people who are board members or people who are on the Any committee. people I can vote are board members. I'm sorry, Nicholas. Uh, if you're talking about uh, casting votes for committees, committee members, so board members and community residents. Board members can, and community resident members. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Yes, they can cast votes regarding uh, measures or resolutions or any actions regarding the committee. Yes, committee members and resident members are the voting. Are the people eligible to vote? Okay, let me uh, give me one second to just get some paper. I do not have paper on me. Give me one second, please. Yeah. Uh, Ainsley, Jessica Suture was the person from Brick last year. Okay. I'm not sure if I know her. I might. Met a lot of people <laughs> over the summer, so. While we wait for Kevin, are there any questions? Hi, this is Amy again. Oh, mm -hmm. this this is Amy again. I had another thought. Does anybody know uh, the Brooklyn Brainery? It's right on Underhill, like kind of between where the library is and where the Botanic Garden is on Eastern Parkway. Um, yeah. It's just like a block to them. Uh, they're, they're wonderful. I took classes there. They're usually very inexpensive. I would say anywhere from $12, $15, maybe $20. I think they're a hidden gem, um, but they might be another cultural um, event. I mean, I don't think that they have a lot of bandwidth to give out things for free. It's usually people who step up to give a class and they charge $2, you know, but if they have something that they, um, maybe they could offer a, like a, a further discount or at least we can raise their profile to our community members who don't know about it because they do all sorts of things like 
Um, I, I did like kind of printmaking there. They have cooking classes. They have discussions on like some sort of um, basically some art history. Uh, you know, um, I, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, but the uh, Lubell, I think Richard, it, you might have got, given a class there or know about it. So um, that might be another place that we can uh, kind of bring into the fold. Richard, do you know them? Uh, I'm trying to locate this. Uh... You said it was the granary or the brainery? Brainery. Brain granary with a B. It's next to it's next to the blue it's next to the blue marble ice cream place. Is exactly. Okay. Uh, I know where Cheryl's Global Soul is, but it's down it's further. further down. Okay. You you're on the same street further down. Oh, not, as far, not as far as Underhill. That is Underhill, right? No, not as far as Underhill. Oh, not as far as Underhill. No, no, no. Anyway. Wait a minute. No, it is Underhill. I'm sorry. Not as far as yeah. St. Mark's. Not as far as St. Mark's. All right. So it's right there. So I don't know it anyway, uh, but they give classes? On art and, and it's, calligraphy. It's a teen storefront. And they, they usually have, I went to one class that had about 25 people in it, but usually they have smaller groups. Um, and again, the, the price is, anywhere from 12 to $18 usually. Um, so, and, and all sorts of things. I think if you go to their website, you'll see it. But I think um, it might be something that if people were interested, and again, like I, I think of, um, um, I think of um, maybe Francesca's group that if they have some sort of, um, you know, group transportation, like a bus that takes people out, that they might be able to make a special class that uh, would, you know, service, you know, um, somebody in CB9 that could like gather a group together at a discounted rate, like maybe, you know, $8 or $10 or something. Why don't we ask them to um, make a class on signage? And uh, that way when we have the Brook the Field Day that we have signs. Okay, I'm uh, not sure. Something to look into, so let's see that. Yep. Yeah, you yeah, know, uh, it could be calligraphy. You know, we could start off with calligraphy yeah. and then they can make signs. It's a good idea. All right, Kali, are you ready? Because I'm trying to see if we could get this meeting done in the next five minutes. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> okay. All right, so we are opening uh, the vote for vice chair. We have oh, Ms. Lugute and Ms. Baptiste. We are the two candidates. So uh, let's do it by if- uh, I'm sorry, the first name, I'm sorry. Uh, Miss Baptiste and who, I'm sorry? Lugute. Mina. Mina. Okay. Okay. And then just for the record, we currently mm -hmm. have nine uh, committee members present. We have yourself, Nicholas. Mm -hmm. Amy is available here still. Mina Lugute, uh, Naomi Baptiste, Julia Bryant, David Romeo, Ainsley Bender, Brenda Pagan, and Richard Lubell are the current uh, Parks Committee members that are here. Okay. Just wanted to state that for the record. All right. So let's uh, let's try to do it quickly in a voice vote. Oh, if you are interested for if you would like to vote for Ms. Legute, please indicate your vote to Khalid. How do you indicate the vote to Khalid? I just said, <laughs> when do I vote for? And so on and so forth. Is he counting? He's going to be the counter. Yes. Why not roll call? Let's, let's yeah, see. let's do, yes. Yeah, I, let's do roll call. I can't do it. Candidate of choice. That's a better way to do it. My apologies. Also, uh, there is a number ending in 9998. Can you please? That's Amy. That's Amy. Pinkers? Oh, Miss Pinkerson. Okay, my my apologies. Just making yes. sure. I mean, you could call, make a call roll and the person indicate their preference. That way Unders we Understood. We'll call a roll. Okay. Uh, Nicholas Almanor? Yeah, Baptiste. Miss mm -hmm. Pinkerson? We're voting for vice chair? Correct. Yes. And you're voting uh, so either. Please go ahead. Uh, 
I'm sorry. I, I think that Mina Lagoot had expressed interest in being a secretary. So I, I definitely uh, choose no, her. And we have a secretary. We did that. Oh, I'm sorry. Then we're voting for vice chair and it's Mina Lagoot and... Um, and Naomi Baxter. Uh, okay, so I, I vote for... Um, I vote for minor uh, and Naomi. I, I think that you have other talents, and I hope that you use them uh, to reach out to your representatives. Um, so, that's another role. indicate your choice, and then we can make commentary after that. <laughs> I, I didn't. So, Naomi, uh, sorry, uh, Nina. Understood. Uh, so you're voting for minor. Okay, so, uh, Ms. Lagute? Right, unless I actually have. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe Fred, you can let inform me if the current uh, candidates are allowed to cast a vote. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Just to make sure. Yes, uh, Mina, go ahead. Please cast your vote. I'll vote for myself. Okay. Next. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Naomi Baptiste, please cast your vote. Naomi Baptiste, please. Thank you. Of course. Um, Miss Julia Bryant, please cast your vote. For Mina. Okay. Uh, Mr. David Romeo, please cast your vote. I vote for Mina. Uh, Ms. Ainsley Bender, please cast your vote. I vote for Mina. Uh, Ms. Brenda Pagan, please cast your vote. Mina. And Mr. Richard LaBelle, please cast your vote. Mina. Okay, we have seven for Mina Lagute and two for Naomi Baptiste. And okay. Mina Lagute has the position. Okay. Congratulations, Mina. Congratulations, Mina. Thank okay. you, Naomi. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good. So let's not be with Naomi, thank you for running. Mina Lagute is our new vice chair that would cover for me if I'm not available to conduct the meeting. Okay. Now, are there any old business? Seeing none, are there any new business? Seeing Hi, uh, before you go, uh, so new would be everything, open items for today's, um, today's call? Do we have some open items that are new business or is that uh, something I think else? The CBNI Family Fund Day and uh, I think that's the only thing that would be new business since we tabled that because park liaison and cultural legislation report will be an ongoing feature of our meeting. So seeing none, uh, I mean the only new business would be family fund fair the discussion. Uh, and, and the follow up of the cultural institutions, right? Yeah, but that's going to be an ongoing part of our agenda every time. Yes, you could also, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this will be, it's just like roll, uh, roll call and uh, adjournment is going to be a, a feature of our meeting. Okay. So a motion to, uh, to adjourn is in order. Will somebody make the motion and let's get a second and then we'll meet next month. I, Naomi Baptiste, make the motion to adjourn this meeting on November 15th of 2021 at 8 49 p.m. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Yay. Aye. Aye. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. This was a very good <laughs> meeting. So I'm I'm very happy the way we will. We're working on this committee and hopefully we'll okay so uh, Nicholas, it. i'm going to put these in uh a, a, a google doc yeah get it to me if you could get it to me tomorrow morning that would be nice oh, darling no no <laughs> i'm a retired <laughs> person you know, i'm a retired person which means yeah, my, my day is totally full tomorrow, I, can but I will get it to you tomorrow okay, okay. i appreciate it okay all right peace out everybody have a good night Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Oh, Miss Bagan, I'm sorry. Uh, when would you like to talk about the uh, garden and green space facilities? Do you want me to give you a call tomorrow, or would you prefer an tomorrow email? Is fine. 
Tomorrow is fine. What time in the morning you want to call me? I can give you a call after, uh, let's say after 1030 or 11 a.m. I might have, you know, items to, to address once I get in, but I can give you a call after 11 a.m. if that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you so much. Got it. No problem. Much appreciated. Have a good night. Bye. You too. Good night, everyone. Good night, Nicholas. Take care. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you again. Thank you yes, very of much. Course. Of course. Of course. Good night, Mina. Good night. Good night, Amy. Mm -hmm.